guys, it's Trevor coming to you with another video. And today we are going to be talking about how you can install PowerShell on a Raspberry Pi running the Raspbian operating system that comes on it by default, or that's made available by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. However, we're not just going to install PowerShell on the Raspberry Pi, we're actually going to build a Docker container image. So just to get started here, the first thing you're going to want to do is have an SSH terminal. I'm using PuTTY here from Windows, but make sure that you've got an SSH terminal into your Raspberry Pi, and you also want to make sure that you install Docker. So the Docker engine is what allows us to easily run and manage containers on Linux and Windows for that matter. Now, if you're running Raspbian, you'll want to make sure that you use a convenience script that's provided to install the Docker engine. So what you'll want to do is go to uh, get.docker.com and run the script from there. Uh, the commands are also available here in the documentation, but if you go to get.docker.com, the commands to run that installation process are also available right here. So you can just copy and paste these commands. Uh, I know there's a lot of controversy around, you know, piping scripts and stuff, but the code is all here. You can read it. It's, it's a very popular installation method. Uh, so go ahead and just get the Docker engine installed. Now, to make sure that the Docker engine is working properly, I'm just going to do a quick Docker version, and you can also do Docker info. So now that we've verified that Docker is running correctly, we need to build a container image. So to do that, what we can do is just create a working directory. Let's call this posh-trevor5, just in case I've created this before. Looks like I have, because I'm getting some tab <laughs> some duplication in my tab completion results there. So I've got this empty directory, and there's nothing in there. So what we need to do is create what's called a Docker file. Now, I've provided a Docker file that's actually part of the PowerShell slash PowerShell dash Docker repository on GitHub. So if you come out to PowerShell slash PowerShell dash Docker, come down to the release folder, go to stable, and then arm32 v7 slash Docker, there is a Docker file in here that you can simply copy and paste and this will serve as your Docker build file. Now, basically what is happening here, all, all these instructions are doing is basically starting with an Ubuntu base image that's specifically designed for ARM32, uh, ARM, ARM devices uh, like the Raspberry Pi uh, 3B+. We're setting a few environment variables that contain the PowerShell version that we want to install. And then we're basically building out the download URL from GitHub under the releases section. And then we're running a bunch of dependency installations. So we're doing an apt update uh, to update the package cache. We're installing a bunch of libraries that are dependencies for PowerShell. And then we're basically telling the container that the entry point for the container is just the PowerShell binary. So it's a pretty simple Docker file, all things considered. So all you need to do is take that code Switch back over to your SSH terminal, run vim docker file, and then I'm going to do colon set mouse equal to nothing just to make sure that that's not interfering with my ability to paste. Uh, hit escape and then hit I to go to insert mode and right click your mouse in PuTTY if you're using PuTTY to paste the contents to from your clipboard to the SSH session. So then I'll hit escape to go back to normal mode, do a colon WQ to write the file and quit vim. And then I should just have a single file in my folder called Docker file. So what we need to do is basically take this Docker file by itself and send it to the Docker engine and tell it to build this container image. But I do want to make one minor update first. You'll see that the current PS version is 6.1.0. So what you'll want to do is make sure that you are running the latest version just in case for some reason that repository isn't getting updated. 
And so what we're going to do is go out to the GitHub PowerShell slash PowerShell organization or repository, come down to releases, and you'll notice that there's some preview releases here. I'm just going to scroll past those. And what we want to do is look for the latest stable release. So the latest stable release is actually 6.1.2 here. So as you can see, the Docker file is a little bit out of date. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that and hit A to go to append backspace 2. And we're just going to replace that version with 6.1.0 with 6.1.2. So that makes sure that we run the latest version of PowerShell. OK, so now that we've modified the Docker file, how do we actually build the container image? To do that, we use the docker build command. And if you add the dash dash help parameter at the end, you will see all of the different options that are available to build the container image. Now, at a bare minimum, all you need to do is run docker build and then a path to the file. Or in some cases, you can use a URL as well to a file. However, we're going to use docker build and then the path to the local directory. And so if we do docker build dot, that is going to build the current directory. Now, by default, the Docker engine is going to select the file called Docker file. But if for some reason you named your Docker file something else, you can actually specify what the name of your Docker file is by using the dash dash file parameter. But in my case, just to keep things simple, I just named it Docker file because it is going to look for that by default. Now, the one other thing that we want to do here is to specify the tag parameter. So when we specify the tag parameter, it allows us to give basically a name to our image so that when we run a container based off of this image, we can reference the image by name rather than the UUID that is automatically generated that uniquely identifies that container image. So it's just a more friendly way to um, reference that image. So I'm going to modify that command line to have Docker build and then the tag parameter. I'm just going to call this container image posh video and then the build context that we're going to pass in is the current directory or dot. So let's go ahead and run that command. And as you can see, it ran very, very quickly. So why did it run so fast? It had to download all these packages and install them and all that stuff, right? Well, that didn't actually happen in this case. And you can tell because it the Docker engine actually told us that it's using the cache. So Docker has a local build cache. So because I have previously built this container image on my system, it actually was able to detect that there weren't any changes to that Docker file. And it just used the cached layers from the image that I had already built. And it basically just compiled those into a new image. And the new image of the image ID that I have, or the UUID of the image, it starts with 822F37, etc. So I can either use the UUID here, or I can use this tag that I assigned to the image to spawn a new container. Now, if for some reason you know that there is this there's a change that needs to be reincorporated into this container image, and you don't want the container uh, sorry, the Docker engine to use the build cache. So let's say, for example, that if the URL to the file was the same, but we knew that that remote file had changed somehow and that we needed to rebuild the container image with that new file, then what you can do is, going back to the help here, there is a parameter called dash dash no cache. And that is an explicit instruction to the Docker engine to avoid or skip using any cached image layers when it builds the container image. So if you ever do run into container image build problems and you want to make sure that no caching is going on, just add that no cache parameter there. But for the sake of time, I'm going to skip over that and I'm going to use the container image that was just built. So now this is where I can hit my docker run command to create a new container using PowerShell. So the docker run command is fairly complex. There's a lot of different options available 
for instantiating new containers, but all we really need to care about at the core is docker run and then the image that we want to use. Now, if I run docker images, I can get a list of all the different container images that are available on the local system. So these are images that I've either built locally previously, or I have downloaded from the Docker Hub or some other registry. So for example, I have a standard Python and Ubuntu images, Fedora images, etc. for the ARM platform. But I also have this posh video image that I just built up here. So let's go ahead and run a new container. We'll do docker run and specify the image name. So if I hit enter, you'll see that we start a new container. We get the PowerShell prompt, and it simply exits. So why exactly did that happen? Well, by default, containers don't have a virtual terminal attached to them. And so basically what happened is this container started and then it just quit right away because there was no input. Um, the, the PowerShell process was waiting for input. There was no uh, virtual terminal attached to that container. And so it didn't know what to do and it just exited. And we can verify that by doing a Docker PS. We can see that the container is not running. We don't have any containers running, in fact, on this system. If I do a Docker PS dash dash all, you can see that I've got my posh video up here, and it was created and exited just a few seconds ago. So what you really want to do is do docker run dash dash interactive, because we want PowerShell to be an interactive process. And we also need to attach a virtual terminal to it by using the dash dash TTY parameter. And then we'll use the posh video image again. So this time, we start a new container from that posh video image running PowerShell 6.1.2. But instead of the process exiting like it did before, we now have an interactive PowerShell process. So if I just hit the Enter key a few times, it's there running. I can do things like get command. It's running a little bit slowly here. So if I run get command, that's just going to list out all my PowerShell commands. I can do get module to show my imported modules in my PowerShell environment. And I have a fully running container image here. So I'm going to exit that container. And there's one more useful parameter that I want to show you. And this helps avoid bloat on your system uh, from just taking up a lot of additional disk space. So if you do docker run dash dash help, there is a parameter called dash dash rm. So if you want to just really quickly use a PowerShell container to test something out and then kill off that environment, uh, so maybe you're doing some kind of you know uh, malware testing or something like that, and you want to just run that in a container, and as soon as you're done with that container, you just want to discard it. So the dash dash rm parameter will delete that container from the local file system when the container exits. And so this is really useful if you just want to try something out. So let's do docker run. Actually, I'm just going to hit the up arrow a couple times and just tack on that parameter. So now I've got the same command docker run, but now I'm going to remove it when it exits. So let's hit enter. And we now have a new container. And let's say I want to test out some module from the PowerShell gallery that maybe I don't trust. You know, I can do a install module command. And I'll do the scope of current user dash force. So this is just going to install some module. I actually created PS Putty myself. Uh, it's a fairly simple uh, alpha version module, but it uh, just does some Putty customizations on the Windows platform. So I can install that module, I can test it out inside of this container environment, and then once I you know, am done testing, so if I do like import module, PS putty, and if it's, it's not actually going to work because I'm not running it on a uh, Windows environment here, but um, you know, normally I would be able to test that out and just play with it, and then once I'm finished, if I hit exit, and I do docker ps dash dash all, you'll see that the most recent container that we created was actually several minutes ago. So the container that we just ran 
was terminated. It was actually deleted from the local system after I was finished with it. So uh, that's really quickly just how you get PowerShell running inside of a Docker container on your Raspberry Pi device. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you liked this video and subscribe to the channel so you can check out all of my future videos when I create them. And let me know in the comments, please. I'd love your feedback to let, to let me know what you would like to see on this channel in the future and what you thought of this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.